We've been talking a lot about exponential and logarithmic functions in this chapter 12. We're at 12.5b. We're going to talk about logarithm tables, scientific notation, the characteristic, and the mantissa. We have 13 previous videos for this chapter. If you become lost or confused, you can just click on the description. So, as I said in the previous video, base 10 logarithms are called common logarithms, and they're useful because they're of the same base as the decimal numeration system. And before we had calculators, like when I was in high school, common logarithms were used extensively for calculations. The abbreviation log is used for the logarithmic function base 10. So if we see log 100, it means log base 10 of 100. Well, that would be 10 to the second power, wouldn't it? So log 100 would be 2. Just remember, a logarithm is an exponent. When a scientific calculator or cell phone calculator isn't available, logarithms can be found by using a table. I have a couple, couple different types I'm going to show you. And most textbooks have one in their appendix or somewhere in the back of the book. We can also find images of them online to print, download as a PDF, or use. So we can find log 5.24. What we do is, let me show you this table real quick. So this is from the appendix in the back of my book. I'm not high tech, you have to bear with me, so I just made a photocopy of it. This is table two, common logarithms, and if you look here, there's an X, and you'll see zero through nine along the top here, and then you'll see a bunch of numbers coming down here. So what we're gonna do is, we need to find log 5.24, so we're gonna go along the X here, and we're gonna follow along down until we see 5.2 right there, and we're looking for 5.24, aren't we? See that? And we find the 4 over here. So we find the 5.2 here and the 4 here, and we find out where they meet, where they intersect, at 0.7193. So we go along that left column, find the 5.2, and then we move across going to the right until we find the 4 for the 5.24. And the intersection of this row and column, we find log 5.24 is approximately 0.7193. We can do it again. We have log 7.09. We look for the 7.0 here, and we take it across until we find the 9. And we get 0 0.8506. See that? There we go. It's approximately 0 0.8506. Now we're going to use this 0.7193 a lot, so bear with me. And using a table and scientific notation, we can approximate logarithms of numbers that are not between 1 and 10. So remember from video 12.3c, we talked about this theorem that for any positive a, where a is not equal to 1, that a to the log base a of x is going to equal x for any positive number x. And it said log base a of a to the x is e x for any number x. Well, that means that if we have a k there, that it's going to be k for any number k. If we have a log base 10 of 10 to the k power, that means it's k for any number k. So that's where scientific notation is going to come in, all right? And then we talked about in 12.4a, we talked about this theorem, that for any positive numbers x and y, if a is greater than 0 and it doesn't equal a 1, if we have x times y here, it could be broken up into add-ins of log base a of x plus log base a of y. All right, so take a look at this. We've got log 0.524, and it's going to equal in scientific notation because we move the decimal point over one hop to the right for scientific notation. Because remember, in scientific notation, it's got to have one digit to the left of the decimal point. So that means to put it in scientific notation, we have to move that decimal point in between the 5 and the 2. That means it's going to be 5.24 times 10 to the negative 1 because we moved it to the right once. So if we distribute this, that means we have log 5.24 plus log 10 to the negative 1. And that's going to give us approximately that 0.7193 plus that negative 1. See? We're going to add that negative 1. Okay? I'll show you again. Now we've got 52.4. So now we have to move the decimal point back to the left. 
So that means we're going to have 10 to the 1, 10 to the first power. See? Because we're going to the left with that decimal point for scientific notation. And that means we've got log 5.24 plus log 10 to the first power using this theorem. Okay? So this multiplication ends up becoming plus. All right? So that means, because we know we're going to keep using this 0 0.7193, okay? That means it's approximately 0 0.7193 plus that 1, see? Whatever the exponent is, that's what the plus is, see? Here, we'll do it again. We've got 52,400. We've got to move the decimal point from back here behind this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 hops. So that means we're, it's going to be written as 10, times 10 to the 4th power. When we split it up into add-ins and find its approximation, it's 0.7193 plus 4. See, that was the exponent. Let's look at this one. We've got 0 0.00524. We have to move the decimal point to the right. 1, 2, 3 to be in between the 5 and the 2. So we're going to have a negative 3 exponent in scientific notation. So we're going to have 0 0.7193 plus that negative 3. See? Does that make sense? So in these last four examples, those last few examples, the integer, integer part of the logarithm is the exponent in scientific notation. And the integer is called the characteristic of the logarithm. And the other part of the logarithm, the number between 0 and 1, is called the mantissa of the logarithm. So that's the characteristic. It's the exponent. Okay? And that's the mantissa. All right? So we did this one. We wrote it as 5.24 times 10 to the fourth. That little fourth is the characteristic, and this 0 0.7193 is the mantissa. See? It's the fractional part of a common logarithm. Now here's a different kind of log table I found. Look at this. Wow. Tiny writing. So these are common logarithms. It says up here, all right? And if you look here, See how close I can get with my focus. It just says the number, and then it has more digits. See that? See how many digits it's got? It doesn't have four. And in this one, you don't have to go along the top. It just tells you because it goes on this table. It goes from a one all the way down here. You can do my focus to the 9.99. See that? So you don't have to intersect. You just look for the number in one of these columns, okay? So we can find log point 0538 showing the characteristic in mantissa. We first write the number in scientific notation. We move it over two hops in between the 5 and the 3. So that means we have a negative 2 for our exponent for that 10 in scientific notation because we went to the right. And then we find log 5.38 on the table. Let's see if I, my focus can do this well. Here's 5.38, and it comes out as 0 0.730782. Okay? That's really hard to see. This table's really small. And we can round it to 0.7308 because that 7 can round up to an 8 because of that 8, right? And the character characteristic of the logarithm is the exponent negative 2, right there. So now log point 0, 0.0538 is approximately 0. 0.7308 plus that negative 2. If we do this addition, we'd get negative 1.2692, etc., but it rounds to that. And we can rename the characteristic negative 2 as an 8 minus 10. 8 minus 10 is the same thing as negative 2, isn't it? Because that's what it equals. So instead of saying negative 2, we're going to say 8 minus 10. Then we add the mantissa to preserve both the mantissa and the characteristic. So we get 8.7308 minus 10. Now the characteristic and the mantissa are useful when working with logarithm tables, but aren't really needed when using a calculator. For example, on a calculator that can show like 10 digits, if you did log 0 0.0538, it would come out approximately as negative 1.26921772424.
and it doesn't show that negative 2 characteristic or the mantissa point 7308. That's with the calculator, all right? But we now know that we can find the characteristic in the mantissa. We just use scientific notation for log point 00687. We need to move this decimal point in between the 6 and the 8, don't we? So we're going to go 1, 2, 3 hops to the right. So we're going to have a negative 3 exponent on our 10. We put that decimal point in between there. And the characteristic is negative 3, isn't it? We can also write it as a 7 minus 10. That's the same thing as negative 3. And the mantissa from the table, if we look for 6.87, we have to find 6.87 on our table. I don't know if you can see this. But it comes out as 0.836957. I know it's really hard to see because this typing is really bad. Okay, so that's 6.87. All right. If we used this table, we would have looked for 6.8. Okay, let's see, it would have been on this one. We'd look for 6.8 here, and we'd go over to the seventh column. See? 0 0.8370, which is what this is rounded off. 8370 is this one rounded off. The 5 made the 9 go up, which made the 6 go up. See? So the mantissa from the table is approximately 0 0.8370, and because we can use the negative 3 as a 7 minus 10, this log 0 0.00687 is approximately 7.8370 minus 10. See our 7, our minus 10? See our mantissa? See? If we do the math, it would be approximately... 2.163, see? Negative, right? 2.163. All right, so that's using a log table, okay? And you can even multiply using them. There's other things that you can do with the log table. So I just wanted to show you how to do it basically. And we're going to continue talking about logarithms. And we're going to find anti-logarithms in the next video and we've got 13 previous videos that are going to be linked in this description and any other ones that I think might be helpful and I'll see you in 12.5c. Bye!